Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install dev mode and the latest version of RetroArch as of June 2021 on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be taking you through all the steps in this process. We're going to be fully setting up RetroArch and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention a couple of things before I get too far into today's video. We're not going to be able to install RetroArch directly onto our Xbox. We are going to have to first enable dev mode on our Xbox. It's really easy to do. However, it is not free. It costs around $20. I'll be walking through the whole process in today's video, but this is an important thing to keep in mind. I'm going to be showing you step by step first how to do this process. And then later in the video, I'll be showing you step by step how to install RetroArch using this process that we set up earlier. So the first thing you need to do for today's video is of course, have your Xbox turned on. Right now we're going to be starting from our dashboard and what we're going to be doing is clicking Y or search on our controller. In this keyboard pop-up that pops up, we're going to be typing in dev kits and we're going to be scrolling up here and I'm going to be clicking on the green one right here that has the two pictures of the Xboxes on top of it. I'm going to be clicking get, simply clicking A on our controller. It's then going to say, congratulations, we got it. And then this is going to start installing right away. From this point, I'm going to be clicking A to view the progress and we can see it's starting to download. It's around hundred megabytes in size, so it should only take a couple seconds to download. Once it's downloaded, what I'm going to be doing is coming back to my dashboard i'm going to be coming down to my apps and games i'm going to be coming down the left i'm going to be coming to the app section and i'm going to be selecting the dev mode app that we just downloaded i'm going to be opening this up and here we're going to go down a process of actually creating a dev mode inside our console which is going to allow us to install custom content and apps so we're going to be able to install retroarch inside our xbox at this point, I will also mention that when we actually put our Xbox in dev mode, it will not overwrite or delete anything from our system. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. However, you are going to need to have at least five gigabytes in the storage space. So I'd recommend to have at least 20 to 50 gigabytes for us to comfortably install RetroArch and have a little bit of wiggle room here while setting up our Xbox in dev mode. What we're going to have to do is once we get to this screen, we're going to have to click next twice until we get to the activate console section where we will then get a code and a link on screen. So what we're going to have to do from this point is come over to any desktop PC and what we're going to be doing is entering in this URL that we see right here on screen. And most likely when you first come in here, you will be asked to log into your Microsoft or Outlook account. In this case, I've already logged in here. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the developer programs right here. And we're going to be clicking on Windows and Xbox. And we're going to be clicking the Get Started button right here. Once this opens up, we'll be brought to the Sign Up page for this. And what we're going to have to do is come here to this page, come over to the right, and we're going to be clicking on the Sign Up link right here. Once this opens up, you are going to have to set up all your account information. Now they do ask for a couple different things things here. First is your location. Then you have to choose an account type, either an individual or a company. In this case, I am an individual, so it's going to cost me around 14 euro. Or if you're a company, it's going to cost around 75 euro. This will vary depending on your location and your currency. However, it is really easy to set up here. And then all you need to do is enter all of your contact and information below. I'm not going to be putting this on screen. I'm actually going to be skipping to when my account is created, but it shouldn't take too long. It's really easy to set up all this. Once all your information is entered, we're going to have to accept the terms and conditions. And then we're going to be able to click finish. And then we're going to be redirecting directed to the registration confirmation page. From here, we can go back to our dashboard. We can get some more information about our account. But from this point, we're actually not going to be staying here. And we're going to be going back to the link that is found on our Xbox. Again, I'll be leaving this link in the description down below. Now, from this point here, we'll be brought to the manage Xbox one console screen. And here below this, we should see a list of all currently added Xbox consoles. So once we get to this screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking on the plus button on the right. We're going to be clicking the enter activation code button. And then this pop up will appear. Now, what we're going to need to do from this point is come back to our Xbox. Xbox, and we're going to be grabbing the activation code that showed up here before. Now, if you've left your Xbox idle for a while, you might get this button to get a new code. All we need to do is connect up our controller again, click A to get a new code, and we're going to be taking this code and we're going to be entering it into our web browser so that it matches up correctly. Once your code is entered, we're going to click submit, and then our code and information will be entered into the web browser. Now, if we come back to look at our Xbox, we can also see now instantly it's going to start activating, and we're going to start activating this Xbox as a developer account Xbox. Now, from this point, if we come back to our Xbox, we'll see this screen right now to switch to developer mode. What we'll have is two options, switch and restart, which is going to automatically restart it as a developer account. We're going to be simply clicking switch and restart. And then this can take a bit of time while our Xbox switches and restarts into developer mode. So once your console has fully reset, you'll be brought to the dev mode UI like you see I have on screen right now. The next issue I had was for some reason I couldn't connect to Xbox Live. I think that's because I'm using a wireless connection. If you're having a wired connection, I don't think this will be an issue. So to fix this, what we need to do is come to our settings here on the left, come down here to launch settings. We're going to be coming to network settings and then we're going to be setting up a wireless network. So basically the dev mode version of the Xbox account is going to act like a brand new Xbox. So we basically need to set up our wireless connection again. Once your wireless network is back up, if we come to our homepage, we should see the Xbox Live is now up and running. And that is an 
important step. We're going to need to have that up and running before we do anything else. So the next thing we're going to be doing is upgrading the available storage and our dev mode in our Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X. This is going to be really useful if you want to play bigger games such as PS2 or Wii games or any games that require multiple files as multiple files at once can't be loaded from an external drive. To do this, what we need to do is load up dev mode as we have right now. We're just going to be starting from our homepage. We're going to be clicking the start button. We're going to be coming down to manage dev storage and by default it's going to be set to five gigabytes. I would recommend doing at least 25 or closer to 50 depending on how much content and how many big games you try to transfer over. This can determine how much you want to give here. For me I'm going to put 30 gigabytes here but you can feel free to experiment whatever makes sense. Whatever you put here will take away from your normal retail mode so that's something to keep in mind. You might want to create a good balance here. Now to mention the available storage here is what's currently available on your SSD not what's available on your SSD as a whole. So if you go back to retail mode, uninstall some games and then come back here, you can feel free to update it to even more to allocate more space. So depending on what you want to do, you can experiment here. But for me, I think around 30 gigabytes will be a good starting size. Once you're happy, you simply come down one, click save. You will then have to restart for these changes to come into effect. Simply click restart. And just like that, you have upgraded the internal storage on your dev mode on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. From this point, all you need to do is open up and locate to your Xbox device portal. As you can see, I currently still have mine open here at the minute. We can see a list of all of our currently installed applications. We have dev mode, my files explorer, home and settings. What we're going to be doing from this point is downloading the latest version of RetroArch. To do this, what we're going to be doing is coming to this link. Links is always in the description down below. We're going to be clicking on the download section right here and we're going to be scrolling down until we see Xbox series slash Xbox one. And here we're going to be downloading the latest version of both RetroArch and we're going to be downloading the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 UWP version. So all you need to do is click download on this file. We need to simply click save as. We're then going to be clicking download underneath the download section, which is going to download RetroArch itself. Click download and again, simply need to click save as. From this point, we're going to be heading back over here to our device portal. We're going to be clicking on the add button right here. And what we're going to be doing is locating to both of our RetroArch contents right now. What we're going to be doing from here is selecting a file to deploy or install application. What we will have from this point is our RetroArch application and we'll have our Microsoft Visual Studio files right here. What we need to do first is simply select our RetroArch application. We're simply going to be dragging and dropping it here as our main file. We're then going to be clicking next and here we're going to have to enter any dependency files and here's where we're going to be adding the Visual Studio file that we added before. So I currently have my Visual Studio file right here. Again, I'm simply going to be dragging and dropping this on here. Then we're going to be clicking start and our new version of RetroArch is now going to be set up and installed on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. From this point, once your file is fully installed, we'll get this information right here. We can simply click done and then we can head back over to our Xbox where we're going to continue to set up RetroArch. From this point, we're back on our Xbox and we can see RetroArch is currently set up and installed. What we're going to be doing from this point is changing RetroArch from an app to a game inside dev mode. To do this, we need to come down to RetroArch. We're going to be clicking the select button, the button to the left of your Xbox controller. Simply click that. We're going to be coming down to view details and we're going to be changing here under the UWP drop down right here from app to game. And this will just allow us to basically use the full power of the graphics card inside RetroArch. From this point, we're going to come back to our home button and then we're going to be opening up RetroArch. Now, for those of you who have watched my previous video, you will see this new version of RetroArch looks a lot different. And especially now that a lot of the content is missing, what we're going to be doing is adding some of this new content first. So what we're going to be doing staying on the main menu here. We're going to be coming down here to the online updater. We're going to be clicking the A button. And the first thing we're going to be doing is updating the RetroArch assets. Simply come here, click the A button, and then this can take a couple minutes to download and install. Once you do this, you'll see a big change right away. Suddenly all of your icons and the text looks much better. So it's a much nicer thing overall. From this point, we're going to be updating a couple of things. We're going to be updating the controller profiles. Come down here, click A. If you plan to use cheats in RetroArch, you can also feel free to do this. However, it can take a long time to download and install all of your cheats, so I'm not going to be doing that in today's video. However, you can really easily do that here. We're going to be updating the databases. Again, click A to do this. This can take a little bit of time too. You can then update the overlays if you're planning to do this. Again, I'm going to be updating mine as well. And then finally, you can update your GLSL shaders and you can update your slang shaders if you plan to use these. I'm also going to be updating both of these too. You then also have the option to update on-demand thumbnail downloads if you would like to do this. By default, it's off and I'm going to leave it off. However, you can feel free to turn it on if you would like. And then the last thing you want to do here at the very top is update core info files. Click A to do this and it's going to update all of those as well. From this point, we're going to be clicking back out of here by clicking the B button or you can click here to the left and we can come here to our menu here on the left. We're going to be coming to our settings and we're going to be looking in the video settings. We're going to be changing a couple of things. 
The first thing we'll be doing is opening up full screen mode. And we have a nice new feature here that's basically going to force overwrite all games into full screen. And I think it's a great new feature. We're going to be turning this on. Your retro arch will go black for a couple of seconds and then it will come back on. So that's the first thing we're going to be doing. We're then going to be backing out of here. We're then going to be coming down to scaling. And what we're going to be doing is enabling integer scaling, which is just going to help games look a little bit better. So this is definitely something I'd recommend having on as well. We're then going to be coming down one more and I'm just going to be mentioning it here, synchronization. And basically now by default in RetroArch, VSync is going to be enabled. And one thing to mention here also that can be a nice to have is to sync to exact frame rate. So basically if you have a monitor that has G-Sync or FreeSync enabled, which can help make your frames look a lot more consistent and a lot smoother. So this is definitely something I'd recommend enabling too if you have a screen that supports that. I currently do not, so I'm going to be leaving that off. So having both of these synchronization features here is also really nice. The last things we're going to be taking a look at is treaded video. Enabling this can help give more performance. However, it can cause latency or some stuttering. So you can feel free to experiment around with this depending on what you're doing. This can be a nice feature. And the last thing is going to be bilinear filtering. Again, this is something that can help soften some harsh edges and make things look a little bit better. However, it can have a slight impact on performance. So this is something to keep in mind. You might want to experiment with this also depending on what your goals are. From this point, the next thing we're going to be doing is coming to input. We're going to be scrolling down to hotkeys and we're going to be enabling a menu toggle. This is something I also mentioned in my previous RetroArch video. It basically allows us to open up our overlay on screen RetroArch controls when we're inside a game. It's super important for changing things or even leaving your game. We need to click in here to open this and here you can select whatever combination you like. For me, I like the down and select combination that will open up in games. However, you can feel free to select any of the other ones here you like. Simply click down and select and then that's going to be saved for me. From this point, we're then going to be backing out of here. We're going to be coming back to our main menu. We're going to be coming to configuration file, as you can see I have right here. We're going to be clicking the A button. We're going to be saving the current configuration, and that's going to be saved into RetroArch. From this point, for all of these settings to come into an effect, you may have to restart RetroArch. For me, they all saved here automatically, so that can be an option here. And if you'd ever like to restore defaults, you can always feel free to do that here with reset to defaults, just in case you want to come back to a default state of settings inside RetroArch. And just like that, you have now updated and fully installed the latest version of RetroArch. The last thing I'm going to be showing you in today's video is how to exit dev mode on your Xbox so you can start to access all your original games. And there's one important step we're going to do here. So when you do this, you don't actually accidentally delete RetroArch and have to install all this process again. So I'm going to be showing you that next and then that'll be the end of the video. So once you're in your dev mode, what we're going to be doing is coming to the home page right here. Underneath quick actions, you will have leave dev mode option. And if you select this open, you'll get this pop up to confirm if you want to leave dev mode. What you need to do is come up here and de-check delete side loaded apps and games. It's really important if you accidentally leave this check, you'll have to do the RetroArch step and install everything manually again. So every time you leave dev mode, be sure to uncheck this option. So when you leave dev mode, everything will still be installed. And later, if you want to enter back into dev mode, all you need to do is open up the dev mode app that we installed at the start of the video, restart and launch back into dev mode. And all of your apps will still be there a little bit later on. And it's just to double check and make sure that you can jump back and forth so you can play your normal games. And then you can play your games on RetroArch without any worries of losing any content or any data. And that's the best way to do it. Anyway guys it's as easy as that to install dev mode and the newest version of RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy. Peace.